Hi, I'm Joe Walensky, and I am the program manager for Convey UX, which is an event we've done in Seattle for seven years. I'm going to do another one in March in Seattle, but this year we're doing a special event in Boston that we're calling the Nexus of Product and UX. And so I get the chance to talk with speakers that will be a part of that, which will be August 15th and 16th. And so today I am talking with Rob Hauser. Hello, Rob. Hi. How are you doing today? Doing great. I'm uh, talking from Blink's Seattle headquarters office. Where are you located? I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. Well, it's good to have a chance to talk to you and have you involved in the program. And uh, why don't you tell us, start by uh, tell us a little bit about your background and the types of things that you're doing now. Sure. So my career has been a little bit of a nexus of product management and user experience. Um, I've worked my whole career focused on building user-centered software. Um, I started early in my career doing documentation and training. Um, moved into user research, moved into design, and moved into product management. Um, and so it's been sort of an interesting sort of evolution for me of getting closer to the place where the decisions are made and the strategic planning takes place. Um, but I think all of those different disciplines that I've done that are all focused on understanding users and designing good software and experiences for users sort of contributed to my career. So I've managed teams of large teams of UX, uh, people, large teams of product management and BAs, uh, and combination of the two. So um, I don't draw a strong distinction between them um, in terms of how they work together, just in terms of the techniques that they use. And uh, any of the uh, uh, companies or things you want to talk about related to the, the work that you've done in the past? So um, I'm currently the senior director of product design at a startup company called FinSync, um, and we do um, accounting and financing for small businesses. Um, so it's similar to some of the past work that I've done and one of my longest stints at Sage Software, which also did accounting, uh, small business software. Um, and part of that, I was a consultant for 12 years. So worked with a, a variety of industries and a lot of different domains. Uh, but um, Mostly right now, I'm, I'm, it's interesting for me, most of my career has been either consulting and working with larger companies or being a, a director or manager in a large company. And now I'm in a startup company. So I sort of did it in the, way, the opposite way that most people do. So I'm doing this uh, back to doing the real work myself. Um, and it's been interesting and enlightening to realize the things that I was asking my teams to do were not always as easy as I thought. Yeah, that, that is an interesting uh, part of the evolution. Um, I, I will th we'll talk about your uh, topic at the conference in a few minutes, but is there anything uh, particularly interesting going on in your life separate from what you're going to talk about? Well, I mean, I'm always, I'm a man of many distractions. <laughs> so I do a lot of different things. Um, one of the things that I'm most interested in right now is board games. So I got really turned on to board games about two years ago and have evolved into designing my own games. And it's being part of that process with this game design community, I've learned a lot about how they play test games and how they iterate on their designs. And one of the things that I'm trying to do is bring some of the UX disciplines in terms of research and iterative design, the overall design thinking process into the board game design world. And so that's been sort of a fun project for me, um, just unrelated to work, related to work and unrelated to work at the same time. It's more of a, uh, a hobby, um, but it's a, it's a interesting to work with designers in a totally different environment where they're not designing business software, but they're designing um, games. Uh, so that's been really exciting. But yeah, I mean, it sounds like an interesting pursuit and uh, I'm sure you're, identifying a lot of uh, interesting things. Uh, are there any uh, anecdotes or any insights that you've found as you've explored board games from a UX perspective? Well, I mean, it's not necessarily a funny anecdote, but one of the things that I noticed the most is that you know, the playtesting process that, that game designers tend to use is very uh, prone to confirmation bias. Um, so you end up with the game designers talking almost more than the people play testing. Um, and so it's a lot like having a software developer run your usability test. Um, you get what you would expect, which is 
explanations and defensiveness and uh, that kind of thing rather than listening and understanding. Um, and understandable, the closer you are, the harder it is to objective about it. So I'm just looking at ways to create sort of tools and, um, and maybe a little bit of training that will help um, game designers uh, test their games more effectively. Well, uh, let's talk about your session at the conference. It's entitled Sharing the Journey, How a UX Team Can Contribute to PM Success. So tell us a little bit about what we can expect from that. Yeah, so you know, I mentioned that I've worked both in product and in UX, and sometimes UX is in product organization, sometimes it's in the development organization, uh, it just sort of sometimes it's even in the IT organization, it depends on your company. Um, but one of the things that we all struggle with when we're running UX groups is trying to find and build support for UX, um, both in terms of getting resources that we need to grow our, our teams uh, and, and, and provide sort of user experience services throughout the process, but also to get involved earlier in the process where the decisions get made. Um, in some places, is obviously there's a continuum and everybody's different for everybody, but in, for a lot of people, um, when product managers come to us, they already have a fairly formed design, um, idea of what they want, and sometimes even requirements that sort of dictate the direction of the design. And the UX then has to go back and say, well, wait a minute, do, do we understand the full context of this? Do we have some ideas of how we might do this differently? And sometimes it can be a little disruptive. Uh, and part of that is because we're not involved earlier in the process, in that product management process. This is totally understandable because um, when I went and took the product management uh, training at Pragmatic Marketing, which is where a lot of product managers get their training, if you look at that framework, nowhere does it show user experience. Um, the, in fact, the first three sections of the framework are all product managers going off and doing their own analysis and doing a little bit of their own design process to determine what needs to be built, what the strategy is going to be, and even somewhat what the experience is going to be like. And so. One of the things that I've sort of learned is that if you can provide some UX assistance to product management in those early phases, you can get more involved in the decision making process and have a bigger impact on what actually gets built. Um, and so we'll talk a little bit about how you can use techniques that are common to user experience teams. Sometimes things we might not normally do, um, like help with competitive research, we may or may not do that. But things that we would do, like conduct exploratory research that can help product, you know, identify entire new product ideas or new feature opportunities. Um, also looking at creating a better fast-paced innovation process, which a lot of times product teams struggle with. Um, they don't know exactly how to get that set up, and that's the kind of thing that, you know, as UX people, we like to do that. Um, so it can be a natural partnership um, to help product come up and go through many ideas rapidly. Um, it, it just makes them look good with upper management, and, and it shows the value of, of a strong partnership with UX team. Uh, and then finally, just talking about how we identify and prioritize requirements, which, again, is often done in isolation you know, a product manager going off and thinking about what they need to do and, and coming up with all the ideas and prioritizing those ideas and then coming back to the larger team that usually has a lot to inform uh, in terms of what kind of things should be built or what those priorities should be. And so one of the things I'll talk about is doing a more inclusive kind of sort of a design jam around creating uh, requirements for, for products. So, so really, I'm not going to talk about the details of how to do all these techniques. They're all things that UX people already know how to do. I'm going to talk about a little bit how you sell it to the product management group, um, how some a couple of tips about how you might do it together with them, and what kind of outcomes you should expect uh, and, and even pout in your organization uh, as you go through that process. So it's really, if you're being practical, really pragmatic about it, it's about how you gain support a really strong champion of product management that will help you to grow your teams uh, inside the organization. Well, I think there will be a lot of uh, interesting stuff in that session, so I look forward to that when we get to August in Boston. So thanks for taking the time to chat with me a little bit, sharing your ideas, and uh, we'll get together in a couple of months. I'm really looking forward to it.